Hey guys, I have something super cool to show you today. The Rivera TBR-1SL. So you could hear how loud the fan is. Ah, okay. Now we can talk. The TBR-1SL uh, was the heavy metal hard rock variant uh, and flagship of the Rivera rack lineup in the mid late 80s. Paul Rivera, if you don't know Rivera, is one of the original LA amp gurus. Uh, you know, it may have went as far as California goes, uh, Leo Fender, and maybe Randall Smith, and then uh, maybe Paul Rivera. Hope I'm not missing anyone in there, but uh, Paul Rivera, early, early 80s, was doing tons of uh, pedal boards and amp mods for all of the LA studio cats. He would do a mod on like the Fender Deluxes or Princetons or whatever they had uh, and add like a frequency selection switch in the mid range uh, that allows you to shift sort of the center point of the frequency to dial it in perfectly for the track. Uh, I think Lukather was using this for ages on a lot of the uh, early uh, studio recordings that he was doing. This mid range mod it also shows up in the Lee Jackson amps. Lee Jackson worked for Paul Rivera in the early 80s too. TBR stands for tube rack lineup. SL, uh, I'm guessing, stands for kind of super lead. The TBR1, without any suffix letters, was the original of these TBRs. Then came the M and the SL. The M, which I had as a uh, teenager, so happy to get this thing, and I, I had heard that John Sykes had used some Rivera stuff and some of my other uh, rock heroes. And it turns out that that is the very Fender and sort of classic round. Uh, it's The M stands for maximum flexibility, I believe. And it was, but it didn't go junk, junk, junk. So that was a bummer. It went womp, womp, womp because it wasn't meant for that. It was meant for big round sounds. Gorgeous clean sounds, really nice sort of old Mesa Boogie lead tones. The SL, however, is the one you want for the chunka chunka stuff. All of these share the same channel two. Channel two is the clean sound because Paul Rivera knows that everyone is just interested in distortion, so that's the channel one. He throws channel one up here, and uh, that's the really the channel that changes between these models. It is a stereo rack mount system. There's two 60 watt amps in there. So if you just go out mono, you're running a 60 watt amp. There's a presence and focus, which is a little like a depth knob. There's a whole bunch of pull switches for gains and uh, bright switches and that kind of thing within the channels. There's also P comp. It's a pickup compensation. You know, if some guys are using super hot active pickups and someone's using vintage single coils, there's gonna be a huge discrepancy. So that allows you to kind of dial in with one knob, sort of the entry level before you hit the gain stages. There's an insert point right at the front before the preamps after P-Comp in case you wanna put like a compressor or something in there. The first time I saw these TBRs was Jason Beeler from Saigon Kick using it. Uh, and right away, it has a unique sound. Saigon Kick was produced by Michael Wagner who also produced Skid Row. So for that second Skid Row album, Slave to the Grind, Skid Row guys show up using the Rivera stuff and it's a totally different sound from their first ADA MP1 album. There's also an M1000 amp head that you may have seen the Skid Row guys using. That's using the SL topology. I'm running this into the Fryat power station and into a two notes wall of sound plugging using my Big Harry Cabs cab. She's a good sound cap. This thing has a lot of tones in it because of all of the crazy switching and stuff. Let me show you a couple things right off the bat. Uh, where I'm at is a pretty killer heavy setting. So here we are with the slope. That's all the mids out. We're in slope one. That's like zero bit.
Middle two is my favorite, slope middle two. Three. So now we're getting into a territory that it, the mids really pushed out, or I think the slope is shifting the frequency, so we're getting into a higher frequency that's a little less cool. Four, oops. Five. You could hear on the Skid Row, Slave to the Grind album, a lot of variations with this, if this was the only amp they were using. Sometimes uh, you'll get a slightly thinner guitar, and the left and right guitars do sound different on there, so they were probably using a different middle setting. There's a very signature Rivera thing. It's the way the harmonics come out. Um, they seem to squeak out more than like scream out. I don't know if that's making any sense, but uh, it's a very recognizable Rivera high gain quality to me. I like this slope too. You could just suck out all the mids, it's gorgeous. Ah, Pecan. This is out. Put it back in. That's with it out. You'll notice the bass is at zero. <laughs> it gets overwhelming. It's not one of those tight basses. This came out in like 87. They didn't figure out how to do tight bass until much, much later. So Saigon Kicks second album called The Lizard. Super heavy, good songs. Awesome production, awesome guitar playing. Again, Jason was, from what I read on the internet, using the TBR 1SL with a little yellow. For a little yellow, different. Boss SD1. And it does the job. I mean, this is that time where everyone was like, what? Zach Wilde's using a Marshall on an SD1. How does he get this huge sound? Same kind of thing. It, that, combination of amps from that era and the SD1 are uh, kind of awesome. So here is just a, a raw Rivera tone. You kick in the SD1. Awesome. It's huge, it's tight, really fantastic. And 
you could get close to that just dialing in the Rivera stuff, but it's a little more, uh, really it's more rich and wide and a little looser. The little, little yellow guy just tightens everything up. There's a clean channel. <laughs> so here we go. boost hi yo yo that's that's uh, actually really nice there's got a lot of bottom in man So many knobs. Ooh, that's nice, man. good stuffing. So these are really cool. Uh, it's a great alternative for me to like a dual rectifier where everyone knows that sound. So if you want something super heavy and different, that's kind of a great, great alternative. And then that clean stuff on there is really, really lovely. I didn't really go too deep into the cleans, but the, I have got some beautiful sparkling cleans out of it too. So uh, yeah, super cool. The heaviest thing I've ever felt uh, physically. They're like um, 750 pounds. Um, so heavy. So traveling with it is out. Out of the question, for sure. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.